In the western region of Uttar Pradesh, a magic of glitters was born years ago. From the rising sun to the cloudy sky, let's start a journey to view through the other eye. The city of glass, once famous only for manufacturing bangles, now produces a large variety of products, ranging from cutlery to bulbs and bangles to decorative items. Glass manufacturers rely on a steady supply of recycled crushed glass known as cullet. This glass is cleaned manually and later mixed with sand, soda ash and limestone. The mixture is then poured into a furnace where it is heated up to a temperature of 2600 to 2800 degrees Fahrenheit. Molten glass from the furnace is drawn up with the help of an iron pipe. The purest and hottest form of glass is called gob. To gather a large quantity of glass to work with, the gob is beaten with iron instruments. More quantity of gob is added to this portion and the process is repeated numerously. A gob of glass that has been partially shaped or molded into an object is called parison. The parison is heated and hooked into the bellar furnace. The parison is then drawn into a thin line and rolled onto a spindle. This spindle is rotated manually at a uniform rate to form an even spiral of glass. Spirals are then taken out from the spindle and cut with a pencil cutter to separate out each bangle. Finally, the bangles are sent for joining of ends, finishing, polishing and decoration. The cullet is fed into a furnace where after the process of high heating, a shearing blade cuts the gob into a cylindrical shape. With the help of gravitational forces, the gob goes to a metal plunger through appropriate passes. The metal plunger presses the gob into blank moulds where it takes shape. This process of pressing the gob into a blank mould is known as press and blow formation. Once the formation is complete, the containers are reheated and cooled in an annealing oven to rectify stress and make the glass object stronger. The other process used to form such objects is called the blow and blow formation, where the gob is guided into a blank mould. Here, air is injected into the parison to form a neck. The mould opens and the partially formed container is transferred to the blow mould. Air is injected to blow the container into shape. Finally, the container is sent to the annealing oven. Later, its quality is checked and is packed. Essentially, the entire light bulb manufacturing process is automated. The gob is transferred to a ribbon machine where it is blown into the shape of a bulb. This machine can produce more than 50,000 bulbs per hour. The bulbs are then sent for annealing and packaging. A big gob is taken out of the furnace using an iron rod. Highly skilled tube makers give it a spherical shape. Two people are required to make the tube using the blow and stretch technique. Glass tubes are formed in this manner.
Later, when the tube is cooled, it is finally finished and packaged. Gob from the furnace is transferred to a blowman. The blowman blows the glass into a shape. The semi-shaped glass is then placed into a mold where the mold man gives it the desired shape. The mouth of the thermos is then muffled for the formation of an inner shell. Another gob man transfers the molten glass into the thermos and then it is transferred to a machine man who constructs the inner shell with the help of a machine. A tube is then joined to the thermos for colouring it. The molten glass from the furnace pot is drawn with the help of an iron pipe and transferred to a mould. The mould filled with gob is then pressed to give it the required shape. The container thus formed is sent for kneeling. Similar steps are followed while making small bottles using the press and blow technique. The glass containers thus formed are used for various purposes. The magicians who craft this keep providing us with something or the other which fulfills our requirements. Their magic keeps glittering always.